Hello, good day, everybody. Um, welcome to this um, Bosch uh, webinar. Today we are hosting um, about our system configuration utility or design tool for uh, for systems and specifications for uh, for Presenza. So today um, your presenters will be myself, Mark de Wings, marketing manager for Bosch uh, in the EMEA region, responsible for the public address and voice alarm portfolio. And with me today is my uh, Italian colleague, uh, Luca Galli. He's application uh, engineer and um, is also specialized in uh, public address and voice alarm systems. Good morning to everyone. So what we would like to uh, do today is, um, as from an objective point of view, First, a short uh, introduction to Presenza for those who are not familiar with the system yet. Um, then we would like to um, introduce you to this, uh, this new tooling that we have created to design and specify Presenza systems. And we would like to uh, show it to you in a, in a live demo how this actually works and also show you on the Bosch webpage where you can find this tool for downloading. And in the end, of course, there will also be a, a wrap up and a question and answer session. So um, quickly for those not familiar with Presenza yet. So Presenza is introduced in 2019. It's our um, successor portfolio um, for uh, Presidio. And this is a fully IP based um, architecture, um, fully IP connected. And it is a system that is designed for many applications, hotels, shopping malls, exhibition centers, but also larger applications like airports, uh, metro stations, um, campuses with uh, with multiple buildings, et cetera, et cetera. So in the value proposition of Presenza, there are a few things uh, need to be highlighted. So one, it is a fully secure IP infrastructure. So it means it's IP, but it's also encrypted IP. Um, next one is uh, effective power utilization. So we looked at how can we optimize use of power and with that um, reduce the, the, the cost of ownership of the system by reducing the number of equipments that you need and utilizing the available power to the maximum. High is availability. So we have a lot of redundancy built into the system. So as a safety system, it's always available. We also looked at the user experience. So what are those who are using the systems, a person making a call, what are they actually perceiving? And we optimize the user experience. So for an operator, it's actually the most pleasant system on the market to use. And fully featured as a standard, what does it mean? Everything which you need for a functioning EN54 certified PA system on IP is integrated in the system. So redundancy options are integrated, uh, power utilization is integrated, IP switches are integrated, everything which you need to make a full functional system is all already on board. So small glance at the system, what does it consist of? So here you see um, a wall mounted panel uh, for, for making calls, a desk uh, call, call station for making calls and then we have the uh, the units that are actually the system controller four channel amplifier a channel channel amplifier and the multi-function uh, power supply this um, uh, this unit or this setup is something which we can install um, in a distributed manner over the ip network in the building or uh, a number of buildings so if you see here um there is a lot of redundancy already in the connections uh, between those uh, between those elements. So everything is um, dual connected. This brings redundancy. Power is dual connected, but also the IP uh, connections are uh, redundant in 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 dual art. Um, then there is also mains power, and of course there is a battery backup, all organized by the multifunction power supply. As you can see, even the call stations, we can equip that with a redundant uh, IP with power over Ethernet. Um, the system um, is designed in such a way that, first of all, the housing is only one rack unit high, where Presidio used to be two rack units high. So there we are already saving a lot of rack space, which we know is always very sparse. Um, but not only that, since we have a more efficient power distribution where the system basically um, measures on the line um, what 
the power requirements of a specific loudspeaker line are and allocating exactly that power needed to power the line instead of um, making a default reservation um, for a specific line, we can reduce uh, really a lot of uh, a lot of power because we are simply utilizing the available power in a much more flexible and much more uh, effective manner. With this, we have seen that if we take a system that was planned with Presidio and we plan it then with Presenza, we see that we can save up to 50% um, of uh, power capacity simply because we are utilizing it in a better way. Of course, smaller equipment and less equipment also means less rack space. So um, also this is something which is dropping the cost of ownership and also the system price a lot because also the racks will, of course, uh, cost a specific amount of money. Now, channel amplifier, so there is already a lot of redundancy built in this one. So to avoid a single point of failure, I will quickly run you through them. So one of them is um, if the power circuit fails, then a second power circuit will take over. Huh? Fully featured, it's already inside the amplifier that there is a dual, a dual power supply. There is no separate spare amplifier needed anymore. Yeah. We have the option to have the loudspeaker lines in an A uh, or a B or in uh, in a loop wiring. Then we also have uh, redundancy on the IP connection. So there is a dual IP connection. So if one connection fails, then the other one can kick in. Um, it's basically a ring of IP. So um, you can uh, have the cables uh, coming from two sides. So if one cable is disrupted, then the other cable is still there to keep the connection going. Then the spare amplifier is already integrated in this unit. So no need for a separate amplifier anymore. It's already there. If one of the main amplifiers fails, then the spare amplifier already kicks in. And then there is something called the lifeline. If we lose IP audio, there is still a lifeline which plays analog audio from the uh, from the modem system power supply. So also, if IP audio completely fails and the digital processing is no longer there, then the lifeline takes over. And then we have the one standby system controller. So we can have uh, a mix of amplifiers which are distributed over multiple buildings or multiple areas in the buildings, may it be equipment rooms, um, we can place a second controller in that network. And if one controller fails, then automatically another controller takes over. So a lot of redundancy in the system. Yeah, we can install it centralized in a rack uh, with or without redundancy, but we can also decentralize it. That is leveraging the advantage of the IP network a lot. Uh, reducing cable costs because we are closer to the loudspeaker lines and avoid really long lines if we distribute the equipment over the building using the IP network. Yeah, and if you then look at the complete system, this is what it would look like fully featured. So everything on board, you have the multiple presenza systems um, controlled by the main controller with potentially a backup controller somewhere in the network. Everything is connected on a ring um, on the IP network, and it is running the Omnio protocol for encrypted audio and control um, to make sure that uh, nobody can uh, spoof with the, with the IP communication. Yeah, and this system is fully EN54 certified. Yeah, so short recap before I hand over to uh, to Luca. So what is the Presenza system fully featured? It is using the Omnio protocol to communicate. It is encrypted. Uh, it is encrypted communication. It is compatible to uh, Dante and AES uh, 67 uh, uh, as well. E uh, AES 70 control compatibility. It has a dynamic uh, audio routing because it is using the IP network. We have an open interface that we can use to integrate with third party systems like uh, building management systems or like passenger information systems in rail and uh, metro, as also many other applications. Um, we have um, audio quality processing per channel. As you already saw, each channel basically has its own amp. We have the IP switches and everything built into the unit. Yeah. 
and we can uh, you we can run it on a dedicated network uh, of IP or on the commercial available uh, network. Yeah, the complete IP based architecture is in the DNA of the system. As you saw, it is really fully IP except for the loudspeaker lines. Everything is on IP. Yeah. So, Luca, I would like to hand uh, over to you now because we have Thank created um, we have created this a design tool now for to support uh, those who need to engineer a presenter system and those who need to plan a presenter system. So, Luca, please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Martin. Uh, if you can give me the rights, the presenter rights, uh, I will share the contact. Yeah, just a second. Change role, make presenter. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Do you see my PowerPoint? Yes, look, I see it. Perfect. So let's go. Um, let me spend a couple of words uh, concerning how to design and specifying an uh, audio system for EVAC purpose. Uh, it is important uh, to have a common view about this because usually um there is a need to install uh, a pavs system if uh, uh, and risk analysis is telling us that uh, it is important to grant people to left the, all the, the areas in a safe and coordinated way uh, so usually of course uh, um, the main approach, the right approach uh, to design a PAVA system is to start from the standards and rule. Uh, we know that ISO is uh, the, uh, the is the body, is the committee that uh, uh, creates uh, rules for uh, worldwide applications. Uh, in Europe, we have uh, SEN, uh, that is uh, the one uh, who uh, issued the technical specification 5432. So looking at European, but of course uh, on uh, in uh, other uh, countries, uh, uh, there are different standards, but mainly um, at least on ISO level, uh, we can uh, follow the ISO 721419. It is the st international standards for PAVA system design. Again, uh, it is supported on a European level by technical specification 5432. Anyway, by using these uh, uh, rules and standards, we are able to approach in the right and proper way the uh, PAVA system design. Usually, of course, uh, the documents that uh, as a standard we have to manage uh, or a consultant has to, um, has to manage are the floor plans, uh, uh, some CAD drawings uh, with the sections in order to understand and to identify how is the behavior, uh, the sound behavior of uh, each environment, uh, and uh, uh, they can identify, of course, the system zones uh, in order to find out the number and uh, position of uh, the loudspeaker in, uh, in each environment. Um, of course, it is needed an emergency management plan in order to uh, define the way uh, how to do the evacuation of, uh, of the people. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, it is also not mandatory, but really, really useful and uh, is asked by the standards to have an acoustic report or simulation for each zone, especially the for all those zones uh, that have some, let me say, trouble in terms of acoustic behavior. Uh, for instance, if we have a reverberant areas, it is uh, really important to understand which is the acoustic behavior of, uh, of the rooms. So starting from uh, these uh, um, points, uh, this uh, uh, remark, uh, we can design the, uh, the system in the right way. Going on, uh, of course, uh, having floor plans, uh, with a floor plan that we have to indicate it's not silly, but it's obvious that we have to identify speaker position. We have to identify the speaker position and also to give them the line assignment because 
we will have different lines. Uh, sometimes we use redundant lines. Uh, what does it mean? This means that in a, a defined area, uh, we have to uh, lay two different lines uh, in order to grant a redundancy in, in case of line uh, fault or since the line should be connected to different amplifier channels uh, if uh, uh, an amplifier channel falls. So redundant lines are sometimes a, a good advice uh, um, in order to grant the right redundancy, especially for the big areas. Anyway, each speaker has to be installed, uh, has to be positioned and has to be clearly identified and connected to a loudspeaker line. And finally, the outcome of a project, of course, should be something like this block diagram, diagram where, let me get the pointer here, where we can have uh, lines, a clear definition about lines, a clear definition about the speaker's type, the speaker number, and the total power needed for each line. Um, of course, we can also have uh, the uh, lines and speaker split in uh, a different uh, type of file like uh, the Excel we, we see here. This is just an example. It's not, uh, it's not a tool, but it's just an example where we see the line number, for instance, the zone name, the quote uh, means uh, uh, which floor uh, is uh, um, in which floor we have this zone. The line name, if the line is redundant, so A and B, and uh, the speakers we have uh, here, and the total uh, power of uh, uh, of the line. So more or less all this information we should have available when we approach a project uh, the outcome of a project should provide this kind of documents or something similar again it's not mandatory to have this document but it's uh, uh, something similar to this one and this is the base this is absolutely the uh, the only the only part we need to use our uh, presents a specification tool. In details, what we need in order to specify and to design the presenza system are the zone names. Uh, we need to know if the line is, the, uh, or the zone is provided with a, a redundant line. In this case, we have a sales zone that uh, is split in A and B because there is a redundant line approach here, the same here in this gallery. As you can understand, this is a mole. And we also need the uh, total power consumption of uh, each loudspeaker line. So only three elements, uh, and the most important one, of course, we need to uh, start uh, uh, a system design by using the Presenza specification tool. Uh, how we have to manage this uh, uh, data? It's quite easy. We only have to put this data in uh, an Excel file. So we, we need a simple Excel file. And uh, this Excel file has to be saved like a .csv. So the outcome should be something like this. Again, name, redundancy if needed, and total power consumption. We only need this data. Once we create a CSV file with this data, we are able to uh, approach and to use our uh, sensor um uh, tool um if you want to take a look uh, to the format of the csv file you can of course uh, also open uh, by using windows notepad and uh, you will have uh, something like this so the name a uh, separator that could be a comma the ab if uh, uh, it is a redundant line and uh, the total power consumption nothing more so quite easy to set up the documents we need. Now, having these documents available, we can uh, start in real life uh, our uh, demo. Uh, for your knowledge, uh, the uh, tool, the Presenza Design and Specification tool is available starting from the consultant page uh, of Bosch. Uh, if I click now to the link, it will open the, um, the page. Now, let me share the right screen just one second so this is
this is the screen. Just one second, I will share it. Okay. Share. This one. Okay. So Martin, do you see do you see the screen? I'm checking. Yeah, I do see the screen. Yes. Okay, perfect. So Maybe. this is the consultant resource um, uh, screen. Okay. And uh, let me. It seems okay. Is uh, only the the screen, or is still uh, the PowerPoint uh, online? You see also the. PowerPoint? I only see the screen, uh, perfect, Luca. Perfect. Okay. Maybe yeah, you perfect. can make it a little bit smaller than. Um... We see a bit more of of the page. Okay, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, this is better. Yeah, yeah perfect. perfect. Okay, perfect. So uh, this is the uh, consultant uh, page, and uh, if we go uh, to the design tools, we have a list of available design tools, and there is also the Presenza system configuration uh, utility. If we click on the Presenza configuration utility, this is uh, the screen, and of course, it's quite simple because we only have a disclaimer and data protection in this page we can choose the language so i can put it in uh, french or in italian that is my language or i don't know dutch what uh, as you can see we have several languages i will keep it of course in english now once i choose my language i can simply click here i understand and accept and now i uh, get the access to um, and an instruction, let me put it in this way, an instruction page, we have a brief description. So in this page, there is a description about uh, what we have to do. And it's really, really easy. We only have to do three actions because the required input are loudspeaker circuit nominal voltage, we have to identify. And uh, I will explain, of course, the power load limit per amplifier, we have to check. And of course, we need our uh, loudspeaker circuit CSV file, nothing more. In terms of output, uh, what we will get back uh, are the uh, submitted loudspeaker circuit list, the optimized loudspeaker circuit list, optimized loudspeaker circuit summary, preliminary bill of materials, and the power calculations. And we will see, we can choose uh, if we want all these documents or if you want only few of them. Last but not least, there is, uh, again, an explanation about how to create the CSV file. So you have all uh, the tools here in order to set up the right uh, uh, file, the, the right input uh, uh, data. When you are ready, you can simply open data input form. And here you have the loudspeaker circuit nominal voltage. So you have to uh, set up uh, the loudspeaker output voltage if you have the lines with 70 volts you will choose 70 volts otherwise you will go with 100 volts then for each amplifier you define or better for all amplifier you define the maximum power limitation um, why because usually the standards are asking to get i don't know 10 percent or 15 or 20 percent as a reserve or you have to manage cable losses in this case you can set up here the maximum volume that could be uh, i don't know 58 uh, watts uh, 580 watts it's okay as you can see as an automatic uh, 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 feedback you have three percent or you can put here 10 percent as a spare and you see that uh, it is automatically uh, set at 50, uh, sorry, 540 uh, watts, uh, the maximum limit of uh, the amplifier. In this case, uh, we will let uh, the uh, 540 watts, and now I only have to upload my file. Uh, the file is the one we saw in the, in the PowerPoint, so I go and take it, I called test, I open the file, now the file is uploaded, and as a feedback, the system is telling me, you set the loudspeaker circuit nominal voltage at 100 volts, you set the uh, power limit amplifi for amplifier at um, 540 watts, that means 10% spare, 
the loudspeaker circuit CSV file is test.csv. And inside this file, the tool count uh, 12 circuit. So he's telling me that in this file, I put 12 line uh, loudspeaker lines. Discarded record zero. Uh, what does this mean? What does it mean, this line? The, this line uh, is informing me if there are some data that are not aligned or that are not uh, compatible with the system. For instance, if I left uh, a row that is empty, he will tell me uh, that the, there is one discarded record, so uh, the system will not take care about it. The system will only use the 12 circuit count. Also here, I have uh, immediately uh, uh, the nice feedback because if my project is planning, uh, uh, I don't know, 15 circuit count and the system is telling me I will count to 12 and I discard three. Uh, it, it is important to know that the three of the, these circuits are not good to be used for the uh, Presenza planning tool. So I have to double check the, uh, the file. Um, it is important to know uh, that if I have a circuit that uh, um, in which the power is higher than the 540 watts, I will get an error message here. So I will get an error message that uh, the, uh, at least one line has a, a, a power that is too high compared with uh, uh, the power that Presenza can handle in terms of one amplifier and one channel. Once I, I click on OK, uh, this is more or less the outcome of uh, my Presenza system configuration utility. What you can do is, to, for instance, to modify the date, you can give a name to uh, the number, uh, the, the, the project, uh, for instance, uh, 23 February, something like that. And then uh, here I have the submit, submitted speaker line. Uh, as you can see here, the system is telling me, you, uh, in, in your file, in your CSV file, you put two zones called sales that are redundant, so A and B. Each line has a power of 180 watts. Gallery, uh, the same, A and B, 98 watts per line. The FEV zone is uh, redundant and is uh, both are 120 watts each. Then you have technical rooms that is not redundant, 60 watts. Workshop is not redundant, 40 watts, and so on. Warehouse, restrooms, control room, uh, meeting room, and offices. In total, the power uh, is 1,098 watts. So the tool now is uh, more or less giving me this feedback uh, saying, OK, this is the total power you need. I split the lines uh, in this way. I put on uh, amplifier one, cluster one. What does cluster means? Cluster is a group of three amplifiers with one uh, power supply MPS3. So in, in this case, this, uh, the tool is telling me, I set up a cluster, cluster number one. In the amplifier number one, I assigned the um, line A of sales the line B of FVB, the workshop and the restrooms for a total of 370 uh, watts. So the amplifier is a four channel amplifier. In cluster one, amplifier two, uh, I assigned to the amplifier these four zones for a total power consumption of 370 watts. And cluster one, amplifier three, again, it's a four channel amplifier, I assigned it I assigned 120 watts, 98, 80, and 60. So the total uh, line assignment has been done, as you can see, automatically, really, really in a quick way. Uh, assigned power 358 um, uh, watts with a total of 1,100, more or less. Then I have, uh, of course, uh, uh, further information. So total assigned channel count, the total installed channel count, that are different. Why? Because I have uh, redundant zones and I have, uh, so I have a mix of redundant and non-redundant zones. That's why these are different. The channel utilization in percentage, uh, assigned power supply, power supply, sorry, power consumption, the 
installed power, so this, this is uh, more or less the total power of the amplifier, the utilization of the installed power, the power available, the available power utilization. So I have a clear view and understanding about uh, all uh, the power consumption in terms of loudspeaker lines. Then I have the preliminary bill of materials. Why is the preliminary bill of materials? Because this is the list that is suggested by the tool. So the tool is telling me, okay, you need for your system a PRASCL. And if I click here, I get the data sheet. Keep in mind that the data sheet is uh, uh, connected to the language I selected. For instance, uh, now is in English because I selected English as a language. Is if my choice was uh, I don't know French, uh, I would have the uh, French data sheet. So coming back to the list, uh, the tool is telling me uh, you need a system controller. You need three amplifiers or channel amplifiers. You need one multifunction power supply. You need twelve end of line uh, uh, boards. Uh, one desktop LCD call station, because usually it is the emergency call station, one call station extension, the keyboard, you know, and nothing more. Of course, in my project, uh, I could uh, have uh, different needs. For instance, uh, if I want a redundant uh, uh, controller, I can add here two controllers, because I want a redundancy also in terms of a uh, system controller. I could uh, uh, have, uh, I don't know, two call station and one wall mount call station. For instance, three keyboards, one per each call station. And maybe, I don't know, a nice uh, uh, PRA, EPAS and EPAL. Uh, these are the um, server and the license to manage uh, the uh, commercial part of Presenza, so music uh, and uh, commercial uh, uh, announcement by using uh, tablets or PC or something uh, from third party, um, not application, but uh, uh, like, like I, as I told, PC or, or tablets. And that's it. So this is more or less my needs, my complete list or bill of material. Here, I the, the first step I can do uh, is to export only the uh, bill of material. If I click here, uh, I will export in a, a CV, CSV version the file. So just to give you a quick highlight, if I click here, I don't know because I'm not sharing the Excel file, but let me share it. Let me show the file, uh, this one. So do you see my Excel now, uh, Martin? Uh, yeah, I see, yes, I see it, yeah. Okay, so uh, as mentioned, as the first action, we can export uh, in uh, CSV the bill of material. This is useful mainly if you need to then to import the complete bill of material in a third party platform, but Again, is the first, uh, mm, let me say, export you can use uh, with the Presenza tool. Coming back to the to the consultant. Okay, we are back. Yes, I see it, Luca. Perfect. So further information, I have uh, uh, the power calculation. Also here, I can modify the timing because usually the timing quotient condition is 24 hours, but I can have, I don't know, 36 because my project need more uh, timing quotient condition or 12 because I'm not uh, related to rules. I can do whatever I want. And the system is automatically calculating the uh, needed battery capacity. So here I have all the information related to the battery capacity. Of course, if I want to do a more precious calculation, I can download here the power calculator tool for Presenza. That is an Excel file, but 
staying here in our uh, presenza specification tool now we have all the information what we can do with this information it's quite easy we click on print and the system is telling me okay what do you want to export or what do you want to print do you want to print everything or you want to take out something for this demo i will select everything plus the technical specification technical specification are more or less the tender specification i click to confirm and i have now an excel file here that i will share uh, do, do you see the, the excel file uh, martin um yes i do see the file okay okay because it still is still in the in the um, let me see and in the excel file as you can see here we have 18 pages because we have all the data of the uh, let me save in order to have it uh, yeah this is a pdf file but, uh, not, uh, this is not a pdf a file yes of course yeah. this is a pdf file and let me share the PDF file itself. And the PDF file is this one. Now I will share. The PDF file, just one second, that is opening. Okay, so we can see better. Okay, this is the PDF file. Yeah, I see it, Luca. Okay, perfect. So we have this nice PDF file, and in the PDF file, again, we have all the information about the loudspeaker lines. We have the cluster uh, so cluster one amplifier one so all the distribution of the lines on each uh, channel of uh, the system we have all the information about the power consumption we have the below material suggested so the one suggested and the one edited so the one that we need for our projects we have the mm, uh, battery operation requirement and uh, the power consumption and last but not least, uh, we have uh, the complete uh, uh, bill of material for uh, for the tender. As you can see here, we have supply and delivery of public other system controllers in 5416, the pictures, uh, the, the, quen the quantity, so amplifier, quantity of amplifiers, description for the tender, and uh, let me, and everything we selected in our bill of material. So this is a complete tender document. The good uh, news is that, of course, this is a PDF file, but we can export uh, as uh, a uh, Word document if needed. And so we can uh, elaborate and we can modify in order to um, keep it in, in our tender uh, specification or in our uh, report uh, or something like that. So this is how uh, the Presenza uh, toolbox works. Uh, coming back, uh, last uh, information I would like to share with you. Coming back to the consultant web page, I will share it again. Okay. This is. Um, if you want to do a new uh, project, it's quite easy. Once you export it, so once you printed the, the project and you export it, you can simply go back uh, to home or back to the previous page. If you go back to home, it's quite easy because you are again here. And so you can start with new project, open data input form, select, put your limitation, I don't know, 20% this time and upload a new file. Once uploading, you will upload a new file, you will have a new feedback. So it's quite easy to use. I would say that this is more or less all from my side. I don't know, Martin, if uh, there are some uh, 
uh, questions or um, yeah there are a few questions so um, the first question it's it's not necessarily about the tool but a question is it possible to connect 48 volt power supply from different MPSs um, yeah I think in, in general that is possible technically but there is a limitation with the cabling right Luca yes 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 so uh, the 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 cables that run between the amplifiers and the MPSs they have a specific length because it is assumed that the MPS is actually powering the amplifier which are positioned above the MPS exactly track. exactly exactly technically it would not be an issue because it doesn't matter for the amplifier where the power comes from but um you need to make sure that the space the physical space within the rack allows it uh, because of the length of the cables exactly yeah. yes i confirm of course i confirm yeah okay then there was uh, another big question on multi-controller uh, requirements so there mm -hmm. i answered we will we will answer that separately because it's about a 10 rack system uh, yes. um, so we need to look into that what we can do there uh, routing over multiple subnets so we we are working on such a feature which is not yet fully released um, mm -hmm. so we need to make an assessment on what the project requirements are so uh, Nihat please uh, send a separate email on this and we can we can look at this then yes, further course. let me see is it possible to have 72 hour standby time um, yeah Luca in general yes uh, of course uh, uh, it's a matter of battery yeah, because uh, 72 hours means that uh, we have to uh, design the batteries for instance just to really go quick I, and then I, I will share eh, in a couple of seconds that uh, I will go in the battery but uh, if they if the need is to have a 72 hour time in question condition uh, yeah there is a the requested uh, capacity of the battery is uh, uh, really, really high. So it's not uh, a technical matter, but it's a matter, uh, battery matter. Uh, we have with with uh, the uh, sample I I gave uh, the battery requirement is really, really high because uh, it has to provide uh, you know um, for days something like that uh, of. Uh, of battery power supply. I don't know if it does make sense or, or it's better to find out a different solution. Yeah, the, at least the, the, the good news is that it's uh, it's using 12 volt batteries. So that is um, yes. uh, that is already a, a significant uh, difference uh, to the to the traditional setup. Um, but indeed, if you go for 72 hours, uh, yeah, of course, you, you just need to put more batteries, but it's mm -hmm. not that uh, the MPS3 could not charge them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, then um, as it is an IP-based system, are there any cybersecurity features? Um, yes, there are. We are actually, I think, the first uh, uh, manufacturer who realized that the IP security is uh, is a big topic. It's also a bit the philosophy of of Bosch that we uh, protect our any IP system that we bring on the market uh, that we that we protect uh, that we protect IP data. So also for the PA system, which means the audio traffic is encrypted. The control exactly. traffic is also encrypted. Um, and there is also communication based on trust. So this means that uh, IP components in the network are exchanging certificates before they communicate with each other. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Does separation of commercial and emer emergency audio require two separate fibers not not really i mean uh, separation of commercial and emergency audio usually is made by working with priorities um, we don't need physical separation it is only a matter of priorities uh, presenza like uh, presidio before is able to manage different level of priorities and so until a certain number of priority uh, the audio is managed like commercial and 
over uh, so that uh, that priority uh, is managed like emergency so the only thing we have to do is to assign the right priority to uh, each uh, for instance uh, usually the 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 microphone so the um, the call stations have to be uh, really well managed in terms of uh, priority of course you can also assign a temporary priority in order to raise uh, the call station uh, priority to an emergency level if needed with a with a button so it's a matter of uh, programming not a matter of uh, physical connection yeah okay thank you luca then there is a question would we need a separate power supply so um i don't know the full context of the question but uh, mm. let me try to explain it so if you have an en54 certified system uh, each cluster as luca mentioned that uh, so that could be an amp uh, a controller an amplifier and a power supply um if it is en54 certified then you need to have one of these mps3 units because this is something which is redundant and that is charging batteries um, and typically each cluster goes with one of those power supplies if you are using uh, your application um oh yeah thank you luca yeah they see this is a cluster this Just is a cluster yeah this one yeah so there you see uh, on the left you see the cluster with the controller on it and on yes, the right you see one of the clusters which is only amplifiers and mps trees if you are using it as a non uh, en54 uh, uh, certified application you can also use uh, an, an, an another power supply which does not have the battery backup uh, uh, feature correct luca exactly. yes exactly yeah. Yeah, okay. because we have available also known EN54 uh, power supply in our catalog. Yeah. Then uh, where does the Lifeline audio come from? So the Lifeline audio is playing some uh, some safety messages that are stored inside the MPS3 amplifier. Uh, sorry, MPS3 yes. um, uh, power supply. It's uh, it's uh, an analog audio connection uh, which runs directly from the uh, from the MPS3 to the amplifiers. Yeah, there you can see exactly. it. And um, it's not coming from the controller, but everything is pre-stored in the uh, uh, multi-system power supplier, which is also close to the, it's, it's part of the cluster, right? Where it is installed. So you will yes, not have exactly, to... exactly. Uh, usually just to give you, oh, sorry, I was going too fast. Uh, for your information, uh, the multifunction power supply is uh, able to provide uh, three different lifelines, one per each amplifier. So the audio comes from the multifunction power supply and is different per each amplifier of the cluster. So then we we answered the next question. Can the Audi analog a lifeline output from the MPS3 support a fourth amplifier uh, since it is powered by the external 48 uh, volt power supply? So uh, typically the MPS3 is, pro is providing analog audio to three amplifiers and um, it is addressing that also as a full cluster right it's not yes, it's, it, it's exactly. not it's not separating uh, amplifier 1 amplifier 2 amplifier 3 if the lifeline is activated it is simply sending those messages to all three of those uh, those amplifiers so if you would mix and match mps trees with different amplifiers then you need to realize that this lifeline is always considered as a kind of cluster communication yes yeah okay how do we connect a fire alarm interface maybe luca you can uh, elaborate on that one a hey, the fire alarm uh, today is uh, uh, connected via gpios uh, the multi-power supply is able to manage uh, uh, gpios as input from a fire detection system and is able to provide of course feedback uh, through gpios to the fire detection system of course uh, if we look to our fire products uh, we are now working uh, 
to have a direct interface between the new detection system uh, from uh, our fire department to the Presenza system. I mean, the new FAP 5000, I think, uh, can uh, will be able to be connected via IP directly to Presenza in order to manage uh, all uh, the virtual contact, let me put in this way, all the information uh, in uh, uh, in the presence system. But mainly, if we have to connect to third party uh, systems, uh, the, the supervised GPIOs are uh, the standard choice. Yeah, okay. Then coming back to the power supply question, it was related to the 72 hour uh, uh, backup uh, power requirement. So if we have a 72 hour backup requirement, do we need to have an additional power supply? I guess charge the batteries most probably yes it is something that has to be designed uh, really in a tailored way because it is uh, in the en54 environment uh, is really unusual to have such uh, uh, let me say such a request because uh, in a en54 environment uh, uh, the standard need is to provide 24 hour as a, as a battery uh, not really capacity, but the intuition condition, it is mandatory to respect to have at least 24 hour. I know in some hospitals uh, they ask for 48 hours, but no more than 48. In case uh, we have to go with 72, I think we have to design the proper uh, uh, system uh, by using most probably one more um, multi power supply. Yeah. Okay, maybe this is a question we need to look into, and we yeah, we of it. course, it's we, uh, yeah, we give it's, a separate answer on this one. Uh, yes, Julian, if that is okay with uh, with you. Okay, then is it possible to store the emergency messages in the MPS tree, which is used for the lifeline output? If you, I think uh, the question is if you can change them. Um, I don't think that's no, the case, uh, Luca. They, they are no, there. In, um, no, in general, again, the messages are not stored in uh, in the MPS3. The aim of the lifeline, uh, the, the main, uh, let me say, purpose of the lifeline is to provide uh, audio to the amplifiers in case of fault of uh, the uh, omnio card in the amplifier or you know uh, of the digital uh, um, uh, let me say uh, converter in the amplifier and uh, the audio um, that uh, is more or less issued by the lifeline uh, in an analog way comes from the network and uh, the um, messages are stored in the pra scl so in the in the controller in order to be able to distribute everywhere. Uh, this is how it works. Okay. And these messages can be changed? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, but yeah, you can store uh, the message you need and uh, we, you can define the language, the duration. Uh, yeah, are more or less uh, MP3 messages uh, or wave messages. I need to check, but okay. Uh, are pre-recorded messages. Yeah, okay. How many GPIOs per amplifier and router are available? Uh, the GPIOs are available in uh, the um, in the MPS3. So uh, the MPS3 is the one uh, that uh, is able, let me share here, in the MPS3. Just one second. Let's see if I. Okay, we have eight GPIOs, but let me share. We have G eight GPIOs as an input in the um, in the MPS3 in each MPS3, and uh, uh, we have eight GPIOs as an output, as you can see here. Share. Okay, this is uh, this is the data sheet of uh, PRA and PS3, and as you can see here, we have eight GPIOs as an input and eight GPIOs, sorry, as an input and eight GPIOs as an output. Then we have uh, the three lifeline. 
with the audio and the power supply for each amplifier. And that's it. And this is the uh, power supply for the uh, SCL system controller. So this is how we structured the MPS3. Other questions so far? Yeah, let me check. Um, yeah, is, is the tool um, automatically generating a single line diagram for Presenza? Um, now, currently in the tool, that is that is not the case. It's not generating a single line diagram. Maybe this is something. Uh, no, um, it... Yes, it's not something, uh, as I mentioned, it's not something in the scope of the tool. Uh, the main uh, uh, scope of the tool uh, is uh, uh, to quick, uh, quickly split uh, the loudspeaker lines in the best uh, possible way to the uh, to the amplifiers. But the assumption is that uh, each line is already designed. So the aim of the tool is not to design a line, uh, but to assign in the right way the line uh, to the right amplifier and to, of course, generate the complete bill of material able to cover the needs in terms of power and uh, in terms of uh, line split. Okay, thank you, Luca. Then can Presenza be packaged as a wall mount system instead of a floor standing rack? This is a very good, uh, very good question. Uh, I, I can answer saying that, uh, yeah, we did it in a couple of uh, projects because uh, it's really compact. So uh, we used uh, in a project uh, one uh, MPS3 with uh, two amplifiers and one uh, system controller and we put in a very small uh, rack cabinet. Uh, here the topic is that, uh, of course, uh, uh, it's not a theme like uh, uh, and uh, I can say an existing or uh, an available uh, wall mount solution, but yeah, in a couple there... of projects we did it. It's really compact, uh, the system, and uh, with uh, more or less uh, uh, five uh, rec units, uh, you are able to manage, like the example uh, I, I mentioned, you can manage uh, 1,200 watts uh, as a speaker load, with controller and MPS3. Then there is a battery, 12 uh, volts battery that fits perfect. But yeah. again, it's something that depends uh, on uh, some different topics. Uh, yeah. You know. Okay, but uh, basically there is nothing against uh, if you find a, no. if you find the right rack, and you put uh, a cluster in 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 a rack. And you have it wall mounted, then basically you yeah. have a wall mounted solution. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was okay. the final question, uh, as far as I see. Yeah. We're also 15 minutes over, so uh, it uh, seems there was a lot of a uh, lot of questions, which is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would like to thank you all for joining uh, the webinar, and uh, hope it was useful for you. Um, please um, stay in touch with us and uh, have a look at the additional webinars that mm -hmm. are coming and we hope that you will join another webinar and uh, learn more about the Bosch PA systems. Thank you very much and we wish you all um, a very mm -hmm. nice rest of the okay. day. Okay, perfect. Have a nice day to everyone.